right now. All right, so it is going to be a zoo lock here uh, and a mage. So two decks we have not seen. It's a mech mage. Finally, finally we see a mech deck wow. in the GVG tournament. This this is the deck that we've actually, you know, Strife Crow, he, he took the Kingwin Finals 4-0 with this deck. And since then, been an absolute force on ladder, but we this is the first time we've seen it in this tournament. So right, we're going to wait to get back speed, speed connected. Uh, so far, we're having a little bit of technical trouble with that. Uh, but, you know, it's just... We are connecting in now. Yep, connecting to it right now. Uh, but, wow, look at this start from uh, from backspace, though. He's got two minions on the board that Chalky certainly doesn't want to have to deal with straight away. Harvest Golem going to help to fortify his board yeah. position. And uh, I mean, this wow, is, this is the this deck hand. that like, I've been playing uh, a ton, but one of the interesting uh, changes right away that I noticed is Bomb Lover. You know, usually that's like, you, like the five drop that I have is a Zerdrick, and you know, I just copied Strife Crow's deck um, that you showed me uh, from the Kingman tournament. And so Bomb Lover definitely a cool, uh, cool change here. Um, you know, one of the things is Zoo, traditionally, i found, has been a pretty tough matchup uh, for the mech deck, but I'm not sure exactly how it works as far as the Implosion deck, because I haven't really thought that. Yeah, a big story that you're going to look for is whether or not the, the Mech Mage can get control of the board and uh, use that to leverage into a win. And looking at Chalky Sand right now, definitely some really strong plays available, but this board is pretty resilient to attacks right now. You know, the 1-1, yeah. one, one, not really that big a deal, so not a ton of damage coming across the board. And you talk want to talk about resilience, uh, Chalky's board, this is a tough bit of minions to deal with here when you've only got 1-1s, one, 1-1 one power minions on the board, regardless of how resilient they are. One of the things you're really looking for, you know, in any mech mage game, but against Zoo in particular, is is Blast Mage, is the Goblin Blast Mage, because there's so many low HP targets that you can take out, you can get such value with that card. Certainly a few options in Backspace's corner right now. Mm -hmm. Implosion readily available, but he's do he does have a taunt behind uh, protecting this Knife Juggler. But I, I don't mind Nerubian Egg and Juggler at all, and yeah. I don't mind Implosion. I think both those are, are totally legitimate. I think this pl this play is going to force your opponent's hand pretty often, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, and I mean, he gets so many Juggles with this as well if, yeah. he, if he decides to trade in. All right, so he's going to decide to trade in. Pretty good chance. Uh, he can take out this 2-1. Let's see. He's only got one more yeah, juggle. Yeah, if he takes out this 2-1, he's in it's really good shape. huge if he does. Oh, it doesn't get it. doesn't quite get it, but still, this is a, a lot of damage being applied by that knife juggler right now. This board, very likely to have some damage coming into it. And Noyatron's going to help to stave off even more of this damage. And Chalky looks like he's got enough cards in his hand to be able to start to fight against this board position. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of options here, and one of the things that you really have to consider when you're playing Mech Mage next is these, uh, is these spare parts. I mean, you know, for example, do you give the armor plating to your two one and attack in? Do you play? Uh, do you attack in with your with your gnome and then time rewind it, replay? You know these are these are things you have to take in consideration. Um, you know in this situation, I wouldn't mind at all if if he wanted to actually just, you know even like he could frostbolt up the the, th the three two. You know there's a lot of different ways he could go here. Uh, you can annoy Tron, you can take out um, you know a token or you could just use the timer winder. I mean, it just depends how greedy you want to be, how much value you want to get. I mean, there's so many different ways he can go here. I think I would tend to favor this way just because you want to get board development down. He's thinking about the Frostbolt. If he does want to go with the Frostbolt, then I'm, I'm expecting him to use maybe some armor plating. It's tough to tell. I mean, I imagine this 2-1's going to be going in here, and he's just going to use Cogmaster and this, uh, and this Annoyatron. He just really wants to get some development through, and and make sure he's not finding himself in a sticky position. So, you know, pinging off one of these 1-1s, one this is a kind of the same thing as development. You're creating a little less board tension this Ooh, way. Oh, nice draw. Wow, that's a really good one. You know, it isn't going to make his Nerubian egg quite active yet, though. Yeah, uh, that's still, one thing he has to take into consideration. Yeah, still has to take some extra damage there for that to happen. Not really what he wanted. Still can take down the Annoyatron. It's not bad. to me like he's gonna play flame imp yeah I'm expecting he's try, trying to discourage away for this uh this tinkertown technician to find its way into this uh into this direwolf alpha i think but chalky has got a lot of answers to potentially what's going on on this board yeah bomb lover however does not look so no it's so scary here. and i mean it's the same same deal you know what though, it, with uh i mean you could you could 
You could ping and then bomb a lot. It actually, it doesn't really look that bad in position like this, because even if you hit the Nerubian Egg, you have a 4-1 ready yeah. to deal with it. So you, you threaten in multiple ways here. And, and let's say he just does happen to hit the Dire Wolf out for the Flame Imp, then I think he's sitting in pretty fantastic well, shape. Well, then what do, you, what do you feel about just... Do you think you should bomb lob then, if, as opposed to that, if you're thinking about trading in? Do you value that over... Okay, well, he does. Let's see, what, let's see where it lands. And he is going to hit the wow. egg, unfortunately, for him. Definitely not the role he wanted, but he can still uh, clean that up. But... Now, where would you value that as opposed to, say, uh, you just ping up the egg, trade in the 4-1, uh, and you frost bolt up the wolf, and you play your Cogmaster or something like that, and then you still have the bomb lover for the next turn? I think you're just looking to kind of develop your board and, and you know, maybe take some risks. If he gets a 3, yeah, against, he does. Yeah, that's, a, that's an average roll, of course, though, but this yeah. is a tremendous board presence that Chalky's having to face down now. He doesn't have Goblin Blast Mage, and he doesn't even have a mech to activate it. If he did, Implosion swinging this game so much this might just be too much for Chalky to have to deal with in a position like this and I mean it's not common for you to have some players are playing with with flame check in this neck you know as, as opposed to um, Dr. Boom but he's obviously playing Dr. Boom so uh, I don't know extremely difficult turn gosh I don't think there's any strong plays here from Chalky left that bomb lobber missing one of the Missing a target that was very valuable, I think, really spelling a difference in this game. For sure. So it looks like he's just going to frostbolt up and probably just play uh, play the Cogmaster, perhaps, and the, and the Harvest Gnome. No, so he's just going to decide to uh, armor plating. Yeah, that's a good choice as well. Denies um, that, that flame. Just it's a pretty tough spot to be in. in. does have Dire Wolf Alpha. He's probably just going to look for the juggle here. I don't think a single one of these minions is going into the Harvest Golem. Put this apple on your head. I could be wrong, though. I mean, you might want to play it, so we'll see. Yeah, I think he's going to take it off now. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to say. Oh, I would tend to be using Flame Imp here, I think. Yeah, Flame Imp and a 1-1 one -one token, then just play the Weapon Gnome, or you can just play the Weapon Gnome so you can get the juggle, and then do it. Either way, it doesn't matter, I guess. Maybe he wants to hold on to that weapon. I don't see a reason to hold yeah. on to it. Yeah, neither do I. wonder why he elected to, to not try to go for the juggle first. Um, just positioning. I think a leopard gnome, maybe. Like, um, he just wants his board. Another way this does is it keeps his board open to like a doom guard or something like that. But that's actually just going to be game one. Chalky doesn't have a way to fight through the amount of pressure and the amount. Yeah, the Undertaker. Pretty much no matter in, what. Yeah. Which is always what you want to see. It's just really just a, a story of, of efficiency, really. Yep. You know, strong, efficient minions are always going to be a good, a good strategy in, in a game like this. No kidding. I mean, the the fact that you have so many cards that are are these these early drop cards guarantees pretty much that you have a good opening hand. I mean, it's it's one of those things that really does turn things around. And we're gonna see a mech warlock. Very interesting. Nothing I've I've ever seen actually. A mech warper in hand there. I'm sure he would have been loving to go uh, turn two with that coin mech warper, but <laughs> not going to be able to get it, and actually not going to elect to get up the, the leopard gnome here, maybe trying to bait something in. Yeah, I think going for the flame up here is just totally yeah, fine. It's totally going to threaten a lot of stuff. Uh, again, Chalky and Backspace practice a lot to, with each other, so I think Backspace knows mech that this is exactly... Clockwork is really nice, though. Yeah, I think this is something that Backspace just knows that Chalky is playing. I, I personally worked with him a lot on this deck, and we liked the way it was functioning, and had some really explosive turns and some strong follow-ups, and... Uh, I think against a start like this, I mean, is there a better start than turn one Undertaker Flame Imp? You know, maybe really. Flame Imp Flame Imp, maybe Undertaker Undertaker, but yeah. I mean, this is pretty much second to none. Uh, Mech Warp or Clockwork is very nice, though. Yeah, well. it's definitely good. And that's that's got to be what it is. Yeah. I'm certainly going to be slowed down by a Death Rattle in this Undertaker hit, but really strong board presence. But yeah, again, and the problem is uh, the Flame Imp is going to be trading into Mech Warper, and he's going to lose his Clockwork Gnome for free, and he's going to be facing down uh, you know, some pretty resilient minions. Yeah, this is Undertaker in a nutshell. Picks up Piloted Shredder, so I, I imagine Harvest Golem's got to be where you go forward from yeah. here. Unfortunately, once again, he does have another Death Rattle there. Um, will he like to actually tab? You know, I think it's got to be the Harvest Golem for sure. The question is, does he trade in? Does he just continue to go? I mean, I think... 
I think there's a lot of merit to trading here, mostly because yeah. you have a Dark Iron Dwarf and Implosion. So yeah. you don't feel like you're losing a lot by trading. In this spot, again, you're just trying to fight for the board and really restrict your opponent's options in a scenario like this. Yeah, you're going to get the additional draws, like you said. Uh, the, the Dire Wolf Alpha in there, so... Think about silencing up here, but it's, it's got to be the pilot that already needs uh, to start just continuing developing uh, that board. I mean, Bomb Lover can be pretty strong, but not when there's really, like, all this kind of just clutter on the board, you know? I mean, it would be huge if he's able to actually uh, hit the Dark Iron Dwarf with it. Well, I'll tell you what's huge is that Sea Giant, the backspace just picked up. Yeah. Uh, sea Giant Implosion feels like it could be an extremely strong uh, burst of minions onto the board, and Chalky, uh, you know, kind of falling by the wayside here, He's needs a special delivery. He's oh. gotten some really bad bomb lobbers so far in this series, but you know, there is a risk of playing a card like that, is that sometimes you will uh, get some unfortunate rolls with that, and it, you know, it takes a long, a lot of long term to really see the the effectiveness of a card like that in scenarios like this. But still, something that I think is is a totally reasonable play. I mean, it, he's in a very similar situation he was last time, where Zoo has gotten a string of incredible start, uh, and it's, he's put himself in a position where he really doesn't have a choice other than to take some of these major risks. Yeah, uh, I already feel like he's just almost in his. The, oh, I don't know, man. It's looking pretty pretty rough to put it lightly, but. Let's have some plays here. We'll see what he's going to elect to go with. Implosion. Hmm. Are you surprised to see him tap there at all? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm surprised, but if you take a look at this hand and how it's going to pan out, if he plays like Mech Warbreaker, Noyatron, and, and Iron Beak Owl, uh, is he making up the ground? Like I think I think he's okay with paying a few points of life here to try to get something rolling. Uh, and it's just a matter of of that backspace seems to have the perfect answer to an opposing implosion, which is just a sea giant. Yeah. Yeah. That would be very rough. I mean, implosion kind of looks tempting, but what do you even use it on? The thing is, it's like, if you go for the 2-3, and you get a bunch of, you know, if you roll hot, like, that's the average roll, but... Okay, so he's just going to take yep. the guarantee. I think, I think you definitely go for the Dark Iron Dwarf here. Just yeah. pulls the most power off the board. Rolls a 2. Uh, so RNG not really on Chalky's side uh, so far in this matchup. And Backspace is about to have a pretty significant board presence with this Sea Giant, and I don't know how Chalky's going to deal with this, but it's got to be something quick, or he's going to fall way behind in board development. I'm just not really even sure what he could get to deal with it. It's like, this is looking so rough, man. Just take the free trade, and the rest is probably just going face. I mean, may decide to trade in Lebanon, I'm definitely considering it. I mean, Nosy is kind of behind on cards, but not really that big of an issue right now uh, for him with that Sea Giant down. They just have so much damage on the board, I don't see a reason to take a risk. Like, power overwhelming yeah. might be one of the only ways your opponent can actually get back into the game. Gosh, look at this board. Two Harps Columns and a Sea Giant. Uh, definitely not feeling too good about your, about your position right now. No, not at all. And I mean, he is able to, to, to silence up one of these uh, Harvest Golems. That is something, at least. We'll see what the, the choice is to try to crack through here. So rough. He's even got another copy of Implosion. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely looking really bad right now for Jockey. There's no way around it. I mean, especially if he... If he I mean, he can just implosion the Dire Wolf. Or the Mech Orper, if you want to go for that. Yep. Okay, so he's going for the Dire Wolf, he's just going to play it safe. He does roll the two, so the right choice was made. Yep, I don't think he's worried about killing this Mech Orper at all. He's just yeah. going to go straight for damage. I am very wow. surprised by that. That's, why would you do that with the air? I'm really surprised. That's crazy, but well, I guess he's just saying there's no way you can win. <laughs> so, um, yeah, sort of. That was a mistake. Uh, he's be laughing about the idea of attacking a, a mech warper with a sea giant. Yeah. Sea giants hate machines. It's true. Yeah. It's a known fact, man. He has a double, couple of double taunts, but I mean, this is this game is is pretty done. I don't see the, like any any comeback mechanic. Uh, in Shocky's deck, and you don't know the whole list or anything like that, you would have a better idea. Yeah, about it, I just, I'm not, a Sea Giant certainly is one of the cards that, that 
you know, any zoo deck is really going to struggle with, but yeah. the cost of playing Sea Giant is the, is the fact that you will lose some consistency in it. And this game, you're not seeing that cost, you're seeing purely the benefit of it, yeah. of playing a card like Sea Giant here. It's just such a massive board presence and really just on the back of an Undertaker Flame Imp start. That's just one of those starts where, frankly, there's not many draws that are going to beat something like that. Yeah. I mean, another implosion here uh, could come out if he decides to go for that. And I, I mean, after this turn, it wouldn't surprise me at all just to see Chalk concede. Knife juggler implosion. <laughs> just in case you did. For the man who has everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, I think that's going to be the play, probably. He's probably just going to knife juggler implosion. We'll see what the roll is going to be. Probably just going to go for the four. Yep. Yeah, he's, supposed he's, to roll he's supposed to trade another minion here <laughs> before he does this. Two. Alright, so it doesn't actually come into play at all, but still, uh, he has more than enough to put face in. Uh, this is going to bring him down to 6 HP, hardest yep. goal in the draw. Nothing that can actually um, really save him, so... He can Flame. almost kill himself with Flame, but not quite. Backspace is going to jump out to a 2-0 lead with Zoo, and what a... Comeback is certainly what he needs to do in this matchup. This is a tough one for all you guys out there who play Druid. I'm sure you know that Zoo is one of those decks where you just absolutely hate to play against. It can just blow you out of the water. And if you're a Zoo player, I'm sure you know that Druid's one that you're often happy to see. Oh, God. This hand is just spells. Just got to pray they draw something here. Oh, well, there's a Bomb Lobber. Yeah. So. Something. That is a card. That is yeah. a card that he can draw. Hmm. Turn two Bomb Lobbers. Not too bad. No, it's not. What else has played into it? But yeah, it's definitely not going to be too bad at all here. Either one that it hits is actually pretty nice. Yep. I think he'd still like to draw Keeper of the Grove. Mm -hmm. But that's got to be the play. And it's just spell besides that. So I, yeah. I mean, one of the things that I learned when I was playing Druid is you have to get minions down. You can't just react with spells. It just doesn't work. You can't fight enough for the board there. So he's definitely hoping to hit this knife juggler. Let's see if he can have the proper bomb lob this time. <laughs> He oh, he get gets it. one. It matters a lot in this position, too, because the 3-2 really is so likely to trade into this 3-3. Three, three. Yep. Just like the knife juggler would have been likely to trade into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, he may have an argument for just pushing for damage here, though. Yeah. Yep, looks like that's going to be the choice, so... No, no. Yep. Think's better, I right? think, yeah, I think protecting your direwolf alpha is a little bit better. Second Savage Roar and Chalky. Nothing. It's just going Chalky's way this series. Do you think you just draw with Wrath? Um, I think if you draw with Wrath, you're going to hit the direwolf alpha. But yeah, I think you draw with Wrath. He just needs to get something going. Yeah. Try to set up a good swipe, perhaps. Wow. Savage Roar. Yeah, it's okay. This is a different game plan that he's going to be trying to be utilizing, but this is fine as well. He's just looking to use what he has to get himself to a position where maybe he can stick like a Druid of the Claw and Taunt, uh, or just get something like a Sludge Belcher out, and try to leverage that board position. So, when he chooses to not Wrath here, that's exactly what he's trying to do, is just have the fact that he's got multiple answers to things moving forward uh, to, to buy time. Another swipe. Jeez. Now... Yeah, okay, so I guess he's just going to draw. Yeah, he's just going to draw. Yeah, he's got something going. Yeah. Keep of the Grove. Pretty helpful. That's a nice one to pick up. Uh, backspace actually, like, Doesn't no gas on his side yeah. of the board. Yeah, he's got Implosions and Sea Giant. And sort of what, you're, what we were talking about, you know, earlier this match, there is a cost to playing cards like this. When your opponent doesn't really have much out, there's nothing you can do. Doomguard really not what he wants there either, to be honest with you. Yep. Doomguard is just probably just likely to discard two of these cards, just wow. frankly, because they're not very strong cool in this hand position. Just spells. It's going to seem strange, but I think he's actually pretty likely to use Savage Warrior. It is bizarre. I mean, this is... Like looking at like looking at this druid versus when we watch Penny play, <laughs> you know, it's like if Penny's hand was just only minions, so it is gonna be wrath. Yeah, just the hero power up. So you're expecting to see the doom guard come down? Because it depends a lot on the draw. I mean, just look at his hand. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're worried about any of these cards getting too much value right now. And it's not gonna surprise me to see like life tap and harvest golem or anything like that, but. Whoa. 
Uh, I'm, I'm not surprised really to see anything here. I think the only thing I would have been surprised to see is like a life tap pass or just pass or something weird. But, uh, you know, Dumgrad's going to get five points of damage here. Chalky finally draws a minion that he can make use of. Uh, He's going to get more than that. Gosh, how does he deal with this board position? He doesn't have a way to answer. I mean, it's just like... got a double swipe. Yeah. You know, if you swipe here, you are kind of sacrificing against him. You did just see an implosion discarded, too. Yeah. So you don't feel like you ne necessarily need to hang on to one of these swipes because of that. Wow, he's actually just going to take five more damage. This is really tough series for Shockey. I mean, he just seems like things have just not been going his way so far. And, I mean, I, Backspace, thankfully for him, has not really had the draws either. Like this game, at least, I mean, just hasn't really had much of anything. Yeah. So... Uh, otherwise, the game could easily just be over by now. The knife juggler and there's an Undertaker and five more damage to face. I mean, it's just so much damage that he's been able to output. Even the juggle goes. Yeah, down to nine HP at this point. And... Where do you... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Chalky oh. just drew oh my lethal God. damage. He's, he's got innervate. exactly 19 with force of nature <laughs> off the top. I cannot believe that it. Ridiculous. That was the only way I think that Chalky could have possibly won this game, and he drew it. That is unbelievable. Oh wow! My with God. what seemed, this has had to be one of the like, it, it, he had an innervate start with bomb lobber, but it was answered immediately, and he didn't have any minions until turn six on the board. Sans the bomb lobber, which got traded yeah. away. It just his hand was a matchup that uh you know backspace and I tend to tend to agree on sort of what the idea of throwaway decks are. And not to say that Warrior is just going to outright lose to Druid, but anyone who's been paying attention closely to competitive Hearthstone knows that this is traditionally a pretty poor matchup for Warrior. So uh, I think what Backspace is going to do here is he's going to queue this Warrior deck uh, for two reasons. Number one, that Warrior is just like one of those decks that everyone really expects you to play. But number two, I think he wants a little bit more information about Chalky's deck before he chooses to queue at Paladin because he did just see a Bomb Lobber. Yeah. So there may be all kinds of surprises that he's expecting to see. So he is taking this in hopes that it goes to the very long game. He doesn't just get blown out of the water and that maybe he could use that information heading into a Paladin game should he even lose this one. Mm -hmm. Well, Barry Warwick's in hand there for backspace. Always something you're happy to see. I think we're just going to see a shade come out left in stealth unless we see a nice five drop uh, be drawn, but. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. So, shade does come down here. And, um, I mean, it'll be interesting to see as well, you know, when the Sludge Welter comes down, because Innervate is in hand, you know, the Black Knight can come out yeah. earlier than, than is expected, and uh, that could really throw a, a wrench in the things uh, for, for Backspace. Chucky continuing to having some development issues too. He seems just, he's drawn so many spells and just not enough minions. And you know he's looking for stuff like Chill and Yeti. He's looking for stuff like Druid of the Claw. Yeah. Do you, does he still have like Spectral Knights and stuff like that in this? Spectral Knight. I'm not sure if it's in here. Okay. You know, I we, no, I worked with him on a couple of Druid decks, but this is something that he decided to really play on his own. You know, we tested Bomb Lobber a lot. Yeah. And we loved it. So yeah. we just played Bomb Lobber pretty much across the board and and liked the way it worked out. But in a, in a situation like this, you know, this is a drastic difference from the Druid deck that, that him and I had been working on. He just choosing to kind of go with Old Faithful here and hope that it works out. Interesting that he is going to decide to go for that because that's making you a little bit more vulnerable to the to the uh, Stellanas. I mean, it's it's like. You know, giving up that silence is, is kind of scary. He's going to set himself up for a nice turn here, though. Uh, he can just intervene off the Doctor. Boom. And uh, is he still going to do that with the Shade or with the Sludge Shrill to draw? I still feel like it's a pretty, pretty yeah, good Yeah, I imagine you have to go. I mean, Doctor Boom on turn five? Yeah. Doctor Boom's a great. threat on turn seven, let yeah. alone on turn five. But then I Sludge Belcher afterwards to protect what's happening, I think, is a much better position to be in. Yeah, I would agree. And, I mean, you have uh, Black Knight on the next turn anyway, if the taunt comes down or something like that to answer it. So I really uh, would be prioritizing the Dr. Boom here. It's just such a tough card to deal with. I guess the question is also, at Sp what point does the shade come out? Yeah, especially a golden Dr. Boom. Of course. Yeah, golden Boom Bots. I mean, what do you do and about those? Innervate. Those actually deal six damage apiece. <laughs> All right, so it is going to come down. Dr. Boom will be the play, and the shade does get revealed. Yep, think, He's going face. I think now's just the time. I mean, you have so much pressure oh, on the board. Big game hunter off the top. Backspace draws big game hunter. An almost perfect answer for a scenario like this. Oh, jeez. Wow, that's got to be heartbreaking. Chucky <laughs> just throwing out the well played. Shade's going to go down. 
Backspace at 23, but he's still got to fight through a couple more things here. Oh, on the back of that big game hunter, man, uh, things are looking kind of tough. I mean, I think you, you just have just... to start trading in the bombs. Oh, I... And you ha I mean, the thing is, it's like, you could, you could keep the bomb. Oh, he's going to swipe, wow. Yeah, I was about to, I just like to swipe hero power here. Really? Okay. Yeah. You're just totally fine. I mean, you need repetitive damage from these guys. You yep. need... If he draws Savage Roar here, this is a, a significant of enough threat to, to actually be threatening a board position, plus sure. the excess damage they'll get through. It's definitely not a play I would have, uh, would have gone for. Definitely uh, makes a lot of sense, though. So. Oh, wow, Dr. this is Dr. Boom kind of come out. Those aren't golden ones, though. Those don't deal six damage. <laughs> yep, but we'll see if uh, there's a big game hunter to deal with them. <laughs> wow, he does draw wow. Savage Roar, though. Gosh, if he was, if he had one more mana. Yeah. You know, in the position that it's in, do you feel like it's just the swipe, Doctor Boom? I don't think so. No. I think I think you're just gonna, I think you just gotta push for damage and hope to find a way to actually lethal your opponent in this position. Mm -hmm. I I mean, you've invested so much into getting to this board, uh, and you've lost a lot trying to fortify it. Maybe yeah. it is just swipe, Doctor Boom, and just hope that the Boombots. He sh I think he should definitely be. A oh, he doesn't want to be attacking the Boombots oh, first because wow. he wants to be able to put him into Doctor Boom. That was a, yeah, but it's. Neither of the Boombots actually got hit by the bomb. Yeah. That was actually really lucky. And he has him down to 14 HP. So Druid of the Claw Savage War, how much would that be? That would actually be uh, 5... 4 plus 6. 4 plus 6, so uh, it would be one. 11. Yeah, because 1 from the Boombot. Yeah. Uh, looks cool. like, yeah, Sludge Belcher definitely the play here. And now Chucky Black finally... Knight finally going to get that value. Yeah, yeah, he's been waiting for this all game. It's like he, he wanted this to come down on turn 5 when he had the first availability for it, but... You know, just still happy he's able to utilize this at all. And I think here he should be hero powering. Hero powering first, yeah, yeah, yeah. And because then hope that it goes face and gets that right of that Yeah, because he's going to trade in this boom bot no matter what. And he, he recognizes the sequencing. Yeah, sequencing could be up to four damage that yeah. he could be wasting. His sequencing is, that's one of always his strong suits. He doesn't really make those little tiny errors. Gets one damage off the boom bot, though. And now two shield maidens in hand for backspace. He's also got Ragnaros. He's going to shield slam here instead. This is such a big swing on the board. He goes up to 20 and gets a 5-5 five five and clears his opponent's the board. Scenarius, Scenarius might be a way to start climbing back into the this play, game, because, though. Uh, you know, it's like, yeah. I'm sure you can draw with the Ancient Allure, but it's not really going to help you very much. And and Scenarius potentially sets up a huge Savage Roar This is a fantastic turn. draw imagine, right now. Especially look at, looking at the, the hand. Imagine he draws into uh, to the combo next turn. I mean, yeah. that would be massive. Backspace may have to decide to roll some dice here with this Ragnaros. Definitely may. Because um, there is not a removal spell direct in this hand to actually yeah. deal with Scenarius. And Combo is certainly on his mind at the moment. Definitely is. I mean, would be the game if that Scenarius does stay down there. Yeah, any of these plays are going to open him up to to, uh, to Force of Nature Savage War, except for Shield Maiden and Armor Up. Oh, he's going to Gromosh. Wow. Gromosh, take that out. I mean, that really puts the pressure on Chalky to have it. And, you know, this is something... I guess you can you can take some more risks when you do have a lead like that, but is it the risk he really if he, wants to I take? I mean, if he goes for Gromish and Chalky's got combo, he's dead. Yeah, he is. If he doesn't, though, at the same time, he's in an amazing Ooh, position. No. This is a really tough turn away. This honestly is one of the tougher turns that's been Whoa. out there. And Ragnaros... It's like a one in three. Oh my gosh, he's going to go for Ragnaros, and he needs this to hit. Where's this 8 damage gonna go? Straight to this 2-2. Two -two. Chalky has 2 outs to win oh, the game, it. and he, he picks up it. the Force of Nature, and Chalky is gonna tie up the series 2 games to 2 with back-to-back -back Force of Nature Savage War combos that he has drawn off the, off top, the top of his deck. I cannot believe it right now. In a series where we had just thought Chalky was gonna be eliminated 3-0, to zero, he's going into match point. He's just playing with such resiliency. He's not giving up. He's making the best possible play every single time. All right, so we are just connecting in here shortly to Backspace's feed, just waiting for him to give us that invite. We do have it now for you. And, uh, you know, this is looking like a, you know, a more promising opening hand here, I would say. And Harrison, you know, a pretty nice draw when you look over and you see two true silver champions. Yeah, yeah. I, I was about to say you mentioned that uh, Chalky was 5-0 with this deck of the tournament so far. Well, he's got to play against the deck that Backspace is 3-0 with. Yeah. Uh, and Paladin is something that I know that Backspace personally really likes to play. Yeah. He, finds, he thinks it's one of the strongest decks out there, and 
And uh, he said he has no problem anchoring it because it's so strong. He feels confident against pretty much any matchup. And, uh, Interesting that they both decided. They both sweep with, with this deck in the first series. They both leave it for last in the second. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, that's something that's sort of a testament to their respect for each other, uh, where these two players, they come into the match knowing that they're both strong. They practice together. They, they're going to be familiar with deck lists a lot of times. Uh, anchoring your best deck is something that, again, it's just a show of respect for how strong of an opponent you believe you're facing. Okay, and Shredder, definitely a nice play here. Will the answer be from Chalky? Could simply be a, a, a taunted yeah, up, I, Drew it, to the Claw. You know, I really like taunting here, but yeah. uh, again, this may be a dynamic that these two players know against each other, is that they both love Bomb Lobber. And <laughs> Backspace has got a bomb lobber in his hand right now, so it's just kind of like, which one of these minions would you rather have get killed? And uh, probably, you'd probably rather have the keeper get killed. But uh, you know, Chalky, I'm, I'm certain is accounting more for True Silver Champion than he is for Bomb Lobber. Yeah. And uh, Consecration. I mean, if this board gets Consecrated, he's not at all uh, concerned with that. So I'd be pretty surprised if you didn't see either Bomb Lobber or True Silver Champion here. Um, and if it is a true silver champion, the thing is, he has the answer. Wow. And interesting, Sludge Belzer did not see that one coming. He goes well, to the it, slit. It, it makes, uh, you know, now that I'm looking at the mana, it makes a lot more sense right. because it is going to sneak in under Black Knight, but this is like a guaranteed Bomb Lobber spot. It's also like a really guaranteed true silver spot because yeah. true silver is going to be proactive development. So, you know, Backspace, of course, he's weighing the consequence of running into a Sludge Belcher mm -hmm. or running into like a Harrison Jones or something like that, but. Oh, frankly, all three of these options are very reasonable. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I initially had dismissed Sludge Belcher, but Chalky's only going to have five minutes next turn, so it makes a lot of sense to play it now. Yeah, because he did spend the coin, and yeah. it does make it a lot more attractive. Mm. Just a tough turn. It is. The other thing, too, is like if he continues to apply a lot of pressure, he may uh, get another taunt out of Chalky, and he's got his Black Knight. Quickly. All right, so it is going to be the weapon, and that's going to be almost guaranteed Harrison response. Which is going to give you know a nice little swing there uh, for Chalky. Would be pretty surprised. Gets a flame to the totem. Could be good. Not the, hey, he look, a, a chillin' yeti. Huh? They I, do exist. I, <laughs> so it's got to be the Harrison. I mean, the thing is, this flame tom actually could start getting some value if if he can get like you know, imagine you get like a muster into that or something like or just that. Just sludge belcher next to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean. It really can start getting some value. You may actually be forced to silence it up, which is kind of gross. But Bomb Lobber is certainly going to come down now, and Bomb yep. Lobber is going to really be... This is the, the best possible Bomb Lobber you could ever get. Gosh, you know what? I actually... I really don't mind using True Silver and Token here either. Because now you're getting you're getting some more presence out of your Flame Tongue Totem. You're getting a True Silver down. Bomb Lobber is still going to be a threat. I think that both of these turns are fine. It, it, it's just a matter of the fact that he's getting a guarantee out of this. And I think well, that's worth more to have anything else. In your hand? Do, you, do, you, do you play this with Force Nature? I don't think so. I think you're fine with just developing. Like, I think I'd rather charge Druid of the Claw into the Flame Tongue Totem first. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that works pretty well as well. I mean, if, unfortunately, it is going to be a true Silver Champion to answer, but, the, I mean, can't really account for everything. Yeah. Gosh, Pete, they're just going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. On this and second true silver certainly not what he wants to see at the at this yeah, moment. No and he's even got shielded mini bot, but he's got quartermaster in hand too. So you know he has to weigh the consequences between developing a token before going that. That is going to be the token. The other thing too is this is going to often occupy two mana from Chalky because quartermaster is something that's in his mind. Wow, and he picks up Cenarius though. What do you th how do you feel about the Innervate Scenarios? I mean, oh, you I have think, to always be worried about a quality. Yeah, I think that Innervate Scenarios is a great play. Yeah. With quality in hand, definitely has the, the potential to deal with that pretty easily, but it's going to yeah. be, uh, unfortunately... I think you're much happier to get Scenarios equality right now than you are to get two or three minions equality later on. He even has the, the follow-up, really nice. Uh, he can equality and then just even shield a minibot. Um, Blood Knight. Oh, is he really gonna? Okay, so Black Knight quality. Be cool. Be able to uh, save weapon charge then. Yep. Or keep his three one alive if he wants, but probably keep the weapon charge. I would imagine. Yeah. So like, if you if you Black Knight one of these two tokens, you can put the three three into one of the two two taunts, and then if you equality afterwards, I mean, you do lose some. Uh, I'm sorry, you would Black Knight after the equality. Yeah, so yeah. you put a three three into one of these tokens, equality straight away. Your 3-3's three already been taken down to one health, so you're not losing anything there. Then you can Black Knight the token. And I kind of like the Shield of Mini Bot play more. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to really to really any of these, to be perfectly honest with you. Let's see what he goes for. Uh, 
Yeah, okay, so it is gonna be this thing. I actually like his children's yeah. butt a lot. So just get him think, a bigger 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, you get the 6-6 six, six down. And the thing is, you get a higher chance to get a value black knight. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can still black knight a sludge belcher. Yeah, or a, a druid of Clanton. I mean, that would probably be game ending. Certainly a scenario that you're looking for that's gonna be a lot better. And, yeah. and you know, Chalky happens to have sludge belcher in his hand. <laughs> Excuse me. He's looking at how to dis, you know, diffuse this board position. It looks to me like this innervate's gonna get used. Mm -hmm. um, and what I would anticipate happening is Keeper of the Grove swipe and then Hero Power, just to, to keep this board under check. If he doesn't feel like he needs a Hero Power this turn, uh, that's understandable as well. A 2-1, you know, how big yep. of a threat is a 2-1 to your board position? Yeah, I think holding on to the Innovate could be, could be fine as well. Force of Nature. Ooh. A little bit surprised by that. Yeah. But. Uh, I like the Keeper swipe play a lot more, I think. He's going to trade them all in. Hold on to that swipe. Wow, so, so really valuing that yeah. swipe a lot. And, and maybe trying to is it possible you think he's trying to feign desperation at this point? Like, I'm trying to say, like, it's definitely possible. Yeah. Like, this is maybe the point where he's like, you know, oh, oh my no. gosh, but Muster for Battle gets picked up, and that's certainly the card he was holding Swipe Board for, but he was hoping that Backspace didn't have Quartermaster. And look at this 11 power worth of minions put on the board in a single turn. Just brutal there for Chalky, down to 22. And I mean, like you said, look at the threat on the board. Oh my gosh, how does he recover from this? Backspace has even got Black Knight, he's got Lay on Hands, he's got his There's own Sludge Belcher. There's a high chance Sludge Belcher coming down, that's the thing. And I, I mean, if, if you play a Sludge Belcher and he gets the Black Knight off on it, I, I feel like it's it's curtains. There's really not a lot of good answers here uh, for Chalky. Yeah, turn 9 Wild Growth is not the draw you're looking for. No. It's actually the worst draw on the yeah. deck right now. But in what could have really have even drawn to, to answer this? There's not... Druids really struggle against flooded decks because you don't really have great AoE removal. And that's why maintaining board control is so important for a Druid. Uh, that's that's one of the things. I mean, Swipe, yeah, sure, it's threatening somewhat, but there's there's the Black Knight the target coming down right away. And, I mean, it's going to be the Yeti played after that, and it's guaranteed to be... Oh, my, oh my gosh. God. A second Quartermaster. Uh, just, wait, you should just token hand for backspace. Quartermaster again. Or, oh, maybe he's, he's going to Belcher. Belcher he's going to Belcher. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. This is just so much. Jockey <laughs> spamming. Well played over and over again. You know... That's I, it, man. I got I got a feel for him, but you can't be upset in a position like this. You were so basically far to down and out in a series where you got back-to-back -back draws to stay alive and put yourself at match point. Uh, the second Quartermaster wasn't necessary to win the game, but it certainly has put a big closeout here. And there's just there's just no cards in Chalky's deck that can get him out of this. No, nope, this is going to be it. Uh, he made a scientist swipe. You do something, I don't know. He may want to play his cards, but there's really nothing he can do here. You know, even if he combos, even if he, <laughs> there's just nothing. There's there's no answer to this. I mean, there's just so much damage down on the board. It's because he's got Chalky. that regular Black Knight in his deck. It with must all be. these other gold cards. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be it. Just cursing everything. Yeah. Where's his gold coin? Yeah. Doesn't have it. It's a good question. But either way, guys, Chalky facing defeat here against Backspace. He fought back valiantly, bringing it back to the fifth and final game. But it looks like it's going to be it for him. Uh, he's coming to terms with it now, I think, and just trying to puzzle through if there's any possible way he could survive. And it looks like it's going to be a silent swipe. Could be... Uh, is there anything that he can do? Well, he's not quite dead this turn, but... Goodness gracious, I mean... <laughs> just look, look at the support I'll position go. you're in. Just how do you get out of this? I don't think you do. I mean, you can swipe, you can swipe the left Quartermaster. That clears a couple things, but still. I mean, what is he even looking for when he's trying here? Okay, so he's going to actually swipe uh, another five. Well, I don't know, man. I just don't see it. <laughs> it's nine points, ten points of damage he's facing down. I mean, he is still alive. Yeah, he's not dead. Lay on, lay on hands, though, you know, going to be able to, to secure some more draws here. It's going to be the lay on hands coming out. Picks up. Oh, actually, just gonna go for black. Knight. Okay. Actually, just, yeah. I mean, that makes just loading up the board. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah. I mean, you just saw. You just saw. Basically, Chalky use everything he's got. I mean, what? What more does he have? Big game hunter's certainly not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a good way to go in style. Oh man. Well played there, to Chalky. <laughs> 
<laughs> that, that is how you're going to do it, man. That's exactly how to do it. So, plays the Golden Doctor Boom. Really he's big misplay here from Chalky, yeah. killing his own Doctor Boom. My gosh. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a big that's a big game under value right there, man. Yep. And uh, Chalky gonna fall down here to backspace. Backspace takes the series three to two.